It pays to know your doctor. It pays to know your lawyer. And now more than ever, it pays to know your local real estate professional. Hi, I'm Jeffrey Drake with Drake Realty, and we have seven offices in the metro Atlanta area, including two right here in Cobb County and one at Lake Oconee. I'm the proud leader of over 700 agents here in Georgia, and we pride ourselves in professional service, whether you are the buyer or the seller. Drake Realty makes the home buying process seamless from contract to close. Our agents are a little different. They're not pushing for the quick sale and close. They are pushing for the best price and terms for their client. In other words, Drake Realty fights for you. And right now, with the lowest interest rates we have seen in 30 years, now's the time to buy that dream home, vacation home, or new home your family deserves. A lot of real estate agents talk big. Let my team at Drake Realty prove they will fight for you. I'm Jeffrey Drake, and I'd be honored to have my team serve you. Visit us online at drakerealty.com. And remember, it's not how quick you sell or buy, it's what the deal provides for your future. A Metro Atlanta favorite is finally coming to Marietta. In Cobb County Schools, release more information on the phased reopening. We'll have these stories and more coming up on this Tuesday edition of the MDJ Podcast. Internet Solutions of Georgia. Hey Atlanta, this is Jay and Lewis, owners of Engineered Solutions of Georgia. Lewis, what should a homeowner do if they have a crack in their block wall, corner of their door, window, or concrete foundation? Well, Jay, if it's a diagonal crack, this lets us know that they should be concerned and there could be a serious problem. Then they should call our office at 678-ESOG now and set up an appointment to have one of our qualified professional technicians come out to their property to take a look at the problem. I'm consumer investigator Dale Cardwell. I've done the research already, so you don't have to. You can trust Engineered Solutions of Georgia. Give Engineered Solutions of Georgia a call at 678-ESOG now. Engineered Solutions of Georgia. We guarantee a stable dry foundation. Welcome to the MDJ Podcast, your hyper-local news on the run. I'm Amy Cargis. Darren Sutherland is on assignment. It's September 8th, 2020, National Ants on a Log Day. Here are the top stories your friends and neighbors will be talking about. At the time of this recording, there have been 404 deaths from COVID-19 reported in Cobb County, with 17,734 confirmed cases. That's 13 more deaths and 838 more cases in a week. Cobb County Sheriff Neil Warren spent time in the hospital this week for dehydration, a spokesman told the Cobb GOP on Saturday morning. Louis Hunter, a representative for Warren, said the sheriff took a couple of days this week to step into the hospital and get rehydrated after spending a lot of time outdoors campaigning. Hunter went on to add that the sheriff is, quote, healthy as a horse. Warren is running for his fifth term in office. He was first elected in 2004 and is facing Democratic challenger Major Craig Owens of the Cobb Police Department in November. One day after Cobb School Superintendent Chris Ragsdale announced that the district phased reopening plan would launch on October 5th, the Cobb County School District updated its remote learning website with FAQs and released a reopening plan overview. Parents can choose their learning preference on Parent View until September 20th and must commit to their choice for the duration of the fall semester. Students in both face-to-face and remote learning will participate in direct instruction from teachers. Students who elect face-to-face learning will also have periods of guided practice on their schedules, while students in remote learning will have independent work slash practice during those periods. The district also outlined disinfecting procedures and virus mitigation protocols for classrooms, buses, cafeterias, and other school spaces. As Ragsdale announced on his Thursday announcement, students and staff are required to wear masks in school facilities and on school buses. A long-time Atlanta staple is making its way into the Marietta Square market this fall. Henry's Bakery and Deli plans to open its fourth location in the market in early October. Henry's, which has been serving the Atlanta area for over 90 years, will open where the Bread and Butter Bakery used to be in the market. The new Henry's will offer the same popular menu items customers have come to love at their other locations, including shortbread cookies, po'boys, turkey sandwiches, cakes, cookies, and other sweet treats. 
Two other restaurants, Siete Tacos and Tequila and the original Hot Dog Factory, will also be coming to the market soon, but opening dates have not been set. Siete, which serves Mexican cuisine and specialty cocktails, will take over the street taco space. The original Hot Dog Factory, which makes themed gourmet hot dogs, will operate out of the market's trolley. Coming up, we'll share the latest in our ongoing series of interviews with Wells Star Infectious Disease Director, Dr. Danny Brandstetter. Stay with us. You deserve better than your bank. Better service, better rates, better solutions. If you live or work in Cobb County, now is the perfect time to make the switch to the Credit Union of Georgia, the better way to bank. Since 1960, Credit Union of Georgia has been providing Northwest Georgia with financial solutions that make sense for your home, business, and family. As a homegrown, not-for-profit cooperative, our members are our mission. Not only will you get the best loan rates, you'll get personalized customer service from people who understand your needs. Plus, Credit Union of Georgia provides real convenience with a network of more than 30,000 accessible ATMs and branch locations across the country. Of course, there's also five locations right here in Cobb County. Ready to see how much better your banking can be with Credit Union of Georgia? Become a member today or apply for a loan online by visiting www.cuofga.com. Org. Credit Union of Georgia, the better way to bank. In today's guest spotlight, Marietta Daily Journal and MDJ online reporter Alex Gilbert talks with Dr. Danny Brandstetter, Director of Infection Prevention at Wellstar Health System. Doctor, could you give us a quick update on the coronavirus? I keep hearing cases in Georgia are going down. Is that right? Yeah, fortunately, we're seeing a slight downturn um, in our numbers. Um, So what does that mean? It means that we have a downturn in not only our percent positives, but actually total number of infections. So this is really good, but uh, we are still at an elevated level of new numbers of infections per day. We are still considered a hot spot or a high level of new infections per day, although we are seeing a significant trend in the right direction. So we're considered a hot spot. I guess that's relative to other states. I mean, where would we rank if that's a... That's a great question. Kind of looking at this. So there's many ways that this is looked at. Um, It's looked at absolute counts uh, or new infections per day. It's looked at percent positive tests in the the community. And it's looked at as infections per 100,000 in the population. So we are considered a high level or a hot spot based on all those right now. So we need to not only get the number of new cases down, we need to get the number of cases per 100,000 down, and then we need to get our percent positive test down. So what are those numbers that we're looking at? The biggest ones, we want to get that percent positive down less than 5%. That would be ideal. Less than 1% would be fantastic. But less than 5, that's a good number. and Probably not considered a high level at that point. The other number is 100 per 100,000. So that's 100 cases of infection per 100,000 population. So if we get below that, then that's another number that will be uh, satisfying us as not a high level of infection right now. We're not just worried about how many people have the virus, but how sick they're getting. Has there been any change on that front since we last spoke? Not really. We're still seeing some very critically ill patients in the hospital and across the gamut in age range and health conditions. So previously, healthy individuals are are in our ICUs and having significant complications. And then we're having people, um, older age population, still being in the hospital as well with multiple comorbidities. What do we know about long-term health effects from the coronavirus? Uh, I've read a couple of things lately that suggest months after somebody stops testing positive for the virus, they can still have just all sorts of weird issues that linger on. What, what have you been hearing from doctors at Wellstar? Yeah, so Alex, you hit a really important topic. So uh, there's a lot of conversation around, well, I'm young and healthy, I didn't have any symptoms, or I was an asymptomatic infection. Um, we are learning more and more about this virus as we go along. Uh, we're just six months, maybe nine months, if you take January, into learning about this virus. So we know that people who have recovered from the coronavirus infection, whether it's asymptomatic or had symptoms and 